वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीता भेला फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली एंड टुडे वी विल बी डीलिंग विद लाइनल ट्रिलिंग्स एसे फ्रॉयड एंड लिटरेचर दिस मॉड्यूल हैज बीन प्रिपेयर बाय डॉक्टर वेल्यूर रहमान फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान किशनगढ़ Today we will be analyzing Lionel Trilling's essay on Freud and literature in which he talks about how Freud himself was influenced by literature and how his theories and beliefs then influenced literature We will also study about critics and Lionel Trilling's own attitude towards Freud and the liberal imagination and also the views of the other critics regarding Freud's psychoanalysis and his application of those principles to works of literature Lionel Trilling was an American literary critic and he and his wife or members of the new york intellectuals he has many works to his credit like the liberal imagination the opposing self beyond culture mind in the modern world sincerity and authenticity trilling identified himself as a liberal or democratic socialist he wanted criticism to recall liberalism to its first principles and he wanted it to be all pervasive and he saw it in the context of socialism and acceptance of all people from all strata of society who should be given their dues Trilling was a lover of literature. He had read Jane Austen, Henry James, E.M. Foster because according to him they represented for him the culture of creativity. He saw literary situations as cultural situations and cultural situations he saw as fights about moral issues. and moral issues he related said had something to do with literary style so he tried to understand what he called the animus of the author the objects of his will the things the author wants or wants to happen lionel trilling's essay was pu- published twice but finally reappeared in a revised form in the horizon in 1947 and was finally collected in his book the liberal imagination essays on literature and society which was published in 1950 trilling tried to relate romanticism and psychoanalysis that is freud psychoanalysis and he felt they were identical in many ways and felt that the greatest masters of romanticism had influenced freud and he also stated that it's not always possible that the author's intention will tell us everything related to the author's art lanel trilling felt that freud's hedonism and cynicism did not let him realize an inseparable disposition of reality and illusion literature he said must be read with reference to its historical context he said if that is done then each reading becomes an interpretation which carries a specific effect of literature and establishes the perennial value of literature felt that both aristotle and freud justified the hedonist principle in literature aristotle defined the concept of tragedy because he said that it had a cathartic effect that it is gave pleasure 
because it was a purgation. It purged the feelings of pity and fear. Freud, on the other hand, renamed literature for its effect, which he called traumatic neurosis. According to Trilling, the common characteristic of both Freud and Romanticism is the perception of the hidden element of human nature and of the opposition between the hidden and the visible. Lionel Trilling saw psychoanalysis as the culmination of the Romantic art. Lionel Trilling's Freudian literature is a criticism of psychoanalysis and literature de developed before and after the birth of psychoanalysis. He traces the impact of literature on Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. And Trilling observes psychoanalysis as the culmination of the romantic literary art. He talks about the Freudian conceptualizations of the mind, instinct, human nature, dream and interpretation of dreams as the great influencing forces in the formulation of the act of writing literature. Lionel Trilling refers to three aspects of Freud. First, that the elements of psychoanalysis were present even in the literature that was written before Freud. That Freud acknowledges that his conceptualizations of psychoanalysis come from literature. And thirdly, that Freud influenced literary criticism and literature during his own time and even after that. Trilling justifies how romantic poets of the 18th century and works of great writers of all times, such as Denis Didoro, Arthur Schopenhauer, Frederick Nietzsche, in their works successfully presented the hidden realities of life, of man and his mind, even before the inception of psychoanalysis. As Diderot brought forth the idea of the tripartite of mind-dream, repression of desire and its result long before Freudian psychoanalysis had come, he also justifies his illustration with reference to Schopenhauer and Frederick Nietzsche. He also refers to Freud's contemporaries like Eliot and Proust, who espoused the role of the unconscious and the exhibited broken self and the distorted ideology of repression in their works. Although these writers have never acknowledged that they had read Freud. Trilling also acknowledges the influence of Freud on the Surrealists for the scientific sanction of their program. He also says that Kafka explored the Freudian conceptions of guilt and punishment and dream and the fear of the father. Tom Smarn, 1875-1955, confessed that he was always in the direction of Freud's interests and has been more susceptible to the Freudian anthropology. Finding a special charm in the theories of myths and magical practices, James Joyce's technique of narration and types of characterization exposed the state of the mind. Trilling notes that Joyce's use of words as things and of words which point to more than one thing and his treatment of familial relationship, reactions of the self to the body, expose his inclination to psychological reality. Trilling gives examples of the apparatuses of psychoanalysis in great classics of the world that were written before psychoanalysis was developed. He refers to dream, the repression of desire, erotic and sexual abnormality in literature. And he also refers to ambivalence in literature. 
He gives the example of Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky has dramatized the mind as a divisible thing, one part of which can contemplate and mock the other. Referring to Freud's idea of the death wish and the dream element in literature, Trilling traces the element of the death wish in the works of Gerard de Nerville, Arthur Rimbaud, Shelley and Baudelaire. Trilling's views on Thomas Mann's understanding of Freud. He says Mann misunderstood Freud. Trilling thinks of psychoanalysis an exponent of the Enlightenment tells us that Freud is not insensitive to the art on the contrary, nor does he ever intend to speak of it with contempt. If we try to understand Freud's application of psychoanalytical theories to literature, then we find that he attributed literature to the expression of the repressed desires of the artist himself. But can we agree with him? There were many people who were critical of his ideas, of saying that the artist was not in control of his work. Charles Lamb tried to establish the sanity and the genius of the artist. He said that it was not art that was in control of the artist, but it was the artist who was in control of his subject. And therefore, this psychoanalytical theory of understanding works related to the Life of the artist or his repressed desires did not mean anything at all and could give no reflection by which the artist works or his artistic technique. Trilling himself also depreciates Freud's idea of the artist as the daydreamer, as the creator of illusions and literature as an illusion. And he also says that the artist is not possessed by his subject, but rather the artist has control and dominion over it. He also makes a clear distinction between the artist mind and the neurotic mind. He says, the creative genius is always in control of his fantasy while a neurotic person is completely out of control and he cannot have any control over his fantasies rather he cannot have any control over his fantasies and is rather possessed by that fantasy so trilling as well as lamb did not find much in freud's theories of psychoanalysis as applied to literature or the work of the artist. As referred to earlier, Trilling said that the concepts that Freud was bringing forth are present in the literature that, ex that was written even before Freud came into the picture. He refers to the German poet novelist who is known as the founder of Romanticism. And he says that we find the death wish in his work. He says, novelist brings in the preoccupation with the death wish and this is linked on the one hand with sleep and on the other hand with the perception of the perverse self-destroying impulses which in turn leads us to that fascination by the horrible which we find in Shelley, Poe and Baudelaire. Trilling refers 
to Freud's chapter 4, Interpretation of Dreams, where he talks about the concept of dreams and the need for a new interpretation of Hamlet's procrastination. He has expressed, that is, Freud has expressed his desire to see anyone read Hamlet as a victim of Oedipus complex and hysteric with reference to the motive of Shakespeare's repressed desire and his deepest layer of impulses. Trilling tells us the value of literature lives upon its effect. And he tries to exemplify this through his reference to Denis Diderot's Ramos nephew. Diderot's Ramos nephew tells about a chance meeting between the unnamed I and the he, the nephew of the composer Ramo, which leads to di a dialogic conversation between the two that covers many topics related to various follies and attitudes of the French society of the time. Regarding tragedy, Trilling discards the Freudian analysis. Trilling reads into Freud's traumatic neurosis, a theory of mithridactic function of tragedy. For Trilling, tragedy has mithridactic function by which tragedy is used as the homopathic administration of pain to inure ourselves to the greater pain which life will force upon us. Trilling in Freud and literature has attempted to clarify that psychoanalysis was an experimental and a new approach to understanding the embedded meaning of a text only if it was read with the liberal imagination. If psychoanalysis is used in an extremely strict sense, then it cannot embrace the goal for which Freud seems to have formulated it. Hence, the understanding of the text, if it is to be through psychoanalytic theory, has to be done with the help of the liberal imagination and not through an extremist view. Before the Holocaust, Freud did not concern himself much with the destructive tendencies of mankind. But after he lost his daughter to the Holocaust and had to live a life alone, full of loneliness, and when his books were burnt, yeah, and he had to flee. He began to think about the destructive tendencies in mankind. He related these to tragedy and said that the pleasure that a reader received from reading or watching tragedy was the outcome of his destructive tendencies. Lionel Trelling disagreed with him and said that the pleasure received whether it was of pain, of suffering, of pity, or terror, or awe, was similar to what Aristotle had termed it to be, that it, it served a cathartic function. That the experience was not a result of the destructive tendencies in man, but worked like a homopathic medicine for a person to be prepared for the eventualities of life that were to come 
or that life would force upon him or her. To sum up, what we have studied today is that Lionel Trilling was an advocate of the liberal imagination. He tries to analyze Freud's psychoanalytical theories. He comes to the conclusion that much of what Freud has written was present in literature even before Freud had written about it. He tells us that Freud based his conceptualizations on reading literature. He also tells us that Freud's theories influenced literature much after Freud had much after Freud was no longer present. Lionel Trilling and Charles Lamb both oppose Freud's theory that all art is an expression of the repressed impulses of the artist. Both Trilling and Charles Lamb say both, La both Charles Lamb and Trilling find a great difference in the neurotic personality and in the, the personality of the artist. They say that while the artist is in control of his fantasy, the neurotic is controlled by his fantasy. Trilling also traces a relationship between the Romantics and Freud and says that he was greatly influenced by them because both look for the hidden elements in human nature and also for the conflict between the hidden and the visible. Lionel Trilling makes an appeal and says that Freud's psychoanalytical theories may be used to interpret a text, but not in an extremely strict or rigid sense, but with the liberal imagination. Please refer to the e-text for more details. Thank you.